I don't know what I could do as a profession if I wasn't doing this job. I found out that people got paid to fight and flip. It was sort of the first time in my life I'd been like, I know what I want to do. The first time I got to go through glass, it felt so wrong and so right at the same time. It's about telling a story. It's not just about like showing off what's cool. I know a lot of people say to me, you know, but don't you want to be an actor? And I'm like, oh no, I don't want to be an actor. We get to do all the fun stuff. The thing that I really dug about Renee is she's such a perfectionist. She pushes herself really, really, really hard. So this morning, we're here at Tempest Free Running Gym in Hawthorne, California. I have a job coming up, and there's possibly going to be some free running stuff. So um, I've been working with Sydney Olson, competitive free runner and stunt woman. I really try to think of my performance and my skill as a business. And it takes a lot before you get to the spot where you're on set doing your work. It's kind of like in sports, you don't show up on game day and expect to be great at something. So I really try to take advantage of the time before a project, because that's your time to you know, maintain the skills that you have and also you know, improve on stuff. This is preseason. My favorite kinds of jobs are the ones with lots of prep where you're really creating the action and creating movement for the character. You're working really hands-on with the actors, the fight team, and the coordinator all to create together this piece. The biggest misconception, I think, is that these characters we see on screen are all the actor. People are shocked when they say, oh, was Ant-Man and the Wasp the most physically demanding movie you've ever done? And I say, no, not at all, because they carried most of the load. And it's hard for them to really, really wrap their head around the fact that one character can be such an enormous collaboration with such incredibly specialized and talented people contributing to my performance and to the realization of the character. For me, I have really have been wanting to be a part of the movement and the fighting for Scarlet Witch. I know like Evangeline feels the same with her character. It was great uh, to have Lizzie come to the training because then we put it like a sort of a, a book together. Yeah, of language. Of all the language as well as moves that were great that we could just throw in anywhere if it was yeah. changed on the fly. We've had We'd to do that do, a lot. Yes. Where I would <laughs> yes. just like show up and you'd be like, I just hey. choreographed this, this is what we're doing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was growing up with watching movies like Sigourney Weaver, Aliens, and then, you know, Linda Hamilton in Terminator, Terminator 2. Those were the characters that I looked up to. So I always knew I wanted to do something physical. I just didn't know what it was until I got into theater first, and then I realized there was a transition into film and stunts in particular. And then I went, how do I get there? What is the path for that? It's a lot of training in all kinds of things to be a stunt performer. You have your standard falls, you have your wrecks, and you also have your fight training that you have to do. You also have wire work training. There are so many avenues. My older sister is a stunt woman, so I've known about the industry and the job for a while, well before I was into it. Yes, that is our real last name. We were born with it. <laughs> I actually approached her at one point and I said, you'd be very good at this and you'd do really well because there's a lot of taller actresses that don't have doubles that can do what you can do. Which, do you want to do this? And she was like, no, you're crazy. I was kind of like, ah, like, I don't know. It might be your thing. I don't know. I don't want to do that crazy stuff. I don't want to fall down all day long. When I was done competing at gymnastics in college, there was a TV show that had just gotten picked up. I think it ended up being called Make It or Break It. It was a gymnastics TV show. When that show first came around, I think I the pilot and I ended up doubling the main girl who was taller than me but it just worked out that I was doubling her and I was like oh like maybe I'll go like be an extra on that show for the summer so I called my sister and she was like well why don't I see if I can get you an audition so I showed her tape to the producers and whatever and they decided to bring her in to do a promo for the show and so she flew to LA and did this promo and they loved her so much that they asked her to come and be that double for the main girl so it's kind of like I got to pass the torch and it didn't take very long before I was like this is what I need to be doing we we just worked on Captain Marvel together this last summer. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. I doubled Julianne Moore and she doubled Jennifer Lawrence and so it was actually kind of sad in the end. She shot me in the heart with an arrow. <laughs> Sometimes we have to separate ourselves because we'll just giggle and laugh and be obnoxious and we're like, we're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Rule number one, never take your eye off your opponent. 
Oh my God! I first met Heidi about 10 years ago. We were shooting Iron Man 2, and I had a very short period of time to, to train in, being as I'd never like stepped foot in a gym, and I had, I had no experience at all with any sort of martial arts or anything like that. And uh, Heidi was like my beacon of hope. Because she like lit the way, and she was incredible. Heidi is so creative in her movement, and all the movements really tell a story. These days, it's more about being able to embody a character, physicalize a character. There's more creativity to the process rather than just being able to do a backflip or fall over or be hit by a car. Everything, when you have a conversation with anyone, they're like, oh, well, we're trying to tell this part of the story mm -hmm. and this is a lover's fight and yeah. this is love and loss and this is where we're gonna have a reversal. And I'm just thinking, well, shouldn't you just be making everyone look cool? But they're actually caring about telling the story as best as they can through fighting. Especially on a show like Buffy where so much of the fight sequence was manifestation of emotion. And so you need mm -hmm. stunt performers that are performers. So for me, I always credit the character of Buffy, not just to me, but to both of these two, because that character was a culmination of all three of us. The thing that's come to me actually through my relationship with Quentin is performances heightened in a stunt performer if willing to act also. <laughs> On Kill Bill, there's a sequence where the bride runs up a banister of a stairwell. We'd done it a couple of times and Quinta came over to me and effectively asked me what my motivation was. And I, I sort of laughed, thinking he was joking because it was sort of a, a running joke for me with a bunch of the sort of athlete jock stunt people that I was around that was sort of, what's your motivation? To get paid, you know? That was sort of the joke that was running of it. But Quentin was sort of asking me what my motivation was as the bride and talked me through, you know, what's happened to her and why does she need to get to those stairs and why does she need to get to the person at the top of the stairs. And it was a real revelation for me that was me being part of that character meant that I needed to find the driving force for it rather than just executing it physically correctly. And it shifted the way that I perform as a stunt performer. And it's also, I mean, I wouldn't have acted in anything if it wasn't for him. Ultimately, if we were any part of shaping the path for other female shows, for women who could be strong, who could be sensitive, who could make mistakes right. and who could still kick some bleep, um, then I think we're just honored to have been a part of that progression. And I'm glad that we're still part of that yeah. discussion. So today we're going to work on uh, the Iris versus the mechanics wife fight. Let's just have the stunt performers show Candace once before she gets, starts getting plugged into it. I was actually a professional athlete my whole life. I was an international gymnast on the Great Britain gymnastics team growing up. I was a professional boxer and I also competed in Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And so I kind of fell into stunts through my fight career. My ring announcer was actually a stunt man and he introduced me to the world and the community. And, and it was really nice to find a career and an industry that allowed me to use all of the skill set and the talents that I had acquired my whole life. Nice job, guys. <laughs> One of the things that impresses me the most in watching her work is just her level of skill and how she takes every single moment and action so seriously. <laughs> I was performing a stunt for a very popular television show and I had to jump 14 feet in four inch heels and land on my feet into a mat that was floating on the ocean. On my landing, I tore all three of my ligaments and compressed my talus into my tibia and my joint locked up. The medical community told me I was never gonna walk again and that my career was over. Because I was an athlete my whole life, I put a lot of my self-worth and my self-value on what I could accomplish with my physical body. So when my injury happened and my body got taken away, I fell into depression, to be honest, and uh, I didn't know who I was anymore. So I really had to engage in the act of self-love and I had to go into a lot of deep introspection to just get to know me for who I really am and not what my physical body can accomplish. When I came back, people, they were just very supportive with my injury and, and if I wasn't able to do something, we would maybe try to change the action a little bit or change the move so that I was able to perform it and still make it look awesome. So it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> Yes, I think things have changed a little bit since years ago, and women are, are much stronger now, and we can do anything. We are having more women in the industry that are stunt coordinating now. Monique Ganderson's coordinating, um, Shauna Duggins is coordinating. There has been female coordinators, but like a minutia, it does now feel like that's shifting. Ready and go, ready and go.
For me, becoming the first female assistant stunt coordinator in Australia wasn't about proving something. It was just a natural progression for me professionally. And I know there's a little bit of pressure for me to become the first female stunt coordinator in Australia, but at the same time, I'm still performing, I'm still doubling amazing lead Marvel characters, and I don't want to step aside from that in order to pursue this other avenue just to make it happen. That being said, it needs to happen. There has to date never been a female stunt coordinator in the history of Australian filmmaking, and it will happen. It's just a matter of time. Things are changing for sure, but it is definitely a little more male dominated on set. I feel like sometimes if women come into this industry and they're not as confident or not as sure, they might have to deal with a bit more challenges because it kind of is a man's world in the film world. I have obviously been daily confronted with why are you choosing to put her behind the wheel rather than the 16 other men that we have on the set. And fortunately, I've worked with, with people and I've had bosses that have been like, well, she's the best person for the job and she actually has more experience than all of those guys combined, so why wouldn't I put her behind the wheel? It's a lot of bros, you know? You have to be able to hang with the guys kind of thing. Sometimes I just, I just want to be around women. <laughs> I'll go somewhere and there's women there, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> This is my favorite part of the process. All three of us are so different, and yet we are three parts of the same whole. And the fact that we have each other on set because we are always surrounded by dudes, and I say dudes yeah. because, <laughs> because that's what it feels like a lot of the time. It's just so nice to have camaraderie, and it's nice to have this collaboration, and it's nice to meet and get to know capable, intelligent, powerful women who are excelling in their field and just killing it at life. Thank you.